first of all, you need to realize that uh, in the UK, there are a lot of global law firms that are more than willing and able to sponsor international students, no matter which part of the world you are from. And as you can see from this list, uh, if you apply to these particular firms, which are able to sponsor you a visa to work in the UK, they will give you a sponsorship for the required legal courses you need to undertake before working for them. Because for foreigners, we usually have a degree that is not UK degree. Uh, so we need to confer our degree into a UK qualification. That's why we need to usually undertake the GDL or LPC, although right now they're introducing a new examination called SQE, but the firm will also sponsor you for any required course in order to pass that SQE, SQE examination. So I don't think it will be a problem for many of you guys as long as you secure a trading contract with them. So these are the list of law firms. They give you uh, uh, all the course fees pay for all the course fees. In addition to that, they will also give you a maintenance fee. That means they will help you sustain your life in the UK because it's an expensive city. So that they will give you at least 8,000, uh, ranging from 6,000 to 10,000, I would say, uh, uh, sponsorships that help you live in the UK during the period of the course. Although right now with COVID and you know the prohibition on international traveling, uh, you likely can also do it in your home country because online classes are available uh, in my cohort. There are people doing that from Malaysia, uh, you know, uh, other, uh, other parts of Europe, etc. So I think it wouldn't be a problem in any event, but just to let you know that there are this kind of sponsorship opportunities in the first place before you actually apply. And I would just uh, mention a bit about the keys or the basics of those applications. Uh, for example, your academics, uh, this is a big part. Some people may think whether I need to get a extremely high first or the top of my class in order to get those opportunities. I think in the UK, there is a tendency that they don't look that harshly at your academics as long as you satisfy the minimum requirement. And for them, the minimum requirement is a 2-1 degree. It's a bit difficult for you to translate that back to your, uh, like, like in, according to your country standard, because for me even, a Hong Kong to one degree may be different from a UK to one degree. And that, that is also the case from for India, Australia, or Canada, et cetera. Uh, however, you just need to demonstrate that minimum requirement. I think usually for foreigners, they don't really uh, uh, like pay that much attention as long as you as long as you don't get a really bad grade at your undergraduate degree. So that's why I don't think uh, you will be in a problem uh, as long as you you, are, you feel like you are kind of like uh, more, more than a bit more than average or at least average uh, in your current class, then I think you can still have a shot. Uh, I personally didn't get the best grade uh, in my class back in Hong Kong as well. So I don't think it's a big problem. And A-levels is like the high school examination in England and Wales. But I think in India, you have different system. In Hong Kong, we have different system. Just put whatever uh, education system you guys use and put the grades you obtained uh, in this particular session for your application. Um, they usually also don't look at it that harshly. They wouldn't like be so straight on the grades because they're not familiar with your system as well. Or sometimes there are also some international standards to, as to how to convert your current grades into the UK uh, equivalent grades. So the recruiters, uh, if they're familiar with that or they have the tendency of recruit international students, they will already know how to do it. So you don't need to worry about that. Just put whatever grades you get and then just show it. Uh, very clearly on the in the application form. Individual law subjects or master's degree would be a plus uh, to show your interest in a particular areas of law. So if you're you really fancy an international corporate or commercial legal career, definitely uh, do those subjects uh, when you are still in your undergraduate degree, so that uh, to pave your way to a more like corp corporate law legal career aboard. Uh, I'm sure that will be very helpful if you already uh, study those subjects uh, and then you apply to firms that specialize in those subjects area. Another word, uh, also master's degree, not compulsory, but as a foreigner, I would say it's uh, a pretty good option if you have the financial uh, resources to do that. Because first of all, assuming COVID like uh, uh, hadn't exist, uh, you could actually attend law firm events and also recruitment events physically. 
And that is a very good uh, indication to the law firms here that you have a commitment to the UK market, even though you're an international student. That's a very good thing. And also, if you're invited to assessment center, usually it's easier for you to attend, uh, for you to attend if you are already in the UK. Although right now they try to conduct assessment center uh, online virtually as well. So it's actually a pretty good chance for you guys to apply. And then if you get an assessment center, you can do it virtually. Uh, that will be a good option as well. Uh, just very quickly also go through work experiences. If you are still in your home country, you don't have UK relevant work experiences or other places, just try to mention any relevant legal work experiences in back home. The important thing is not to uh, emphasize like only your like big law firms were experienced, but the more important thing is to emphasize the kind of skills you learn from that experiences and you articulate it in a very concise manner in the application form and show that those skills are transferable uh, when you work actually as a trainee lawyer at those firms. I think that's what the law firms want to see. So don't shy away from sharing any domestic work experience you have right now in India or any other country actually. And also a non-legal work experience are actually more important than you can imagine, uh, especially in the UK, they have a tendency of recruiting even Law and law graduates, and then the law and law graduates would do the necessary uh, conversion and fast track legal courses, and then before working for the firm. So for them, it doesn't make a big difference for them whether you're from a law or law and law background. So even if you have non legal work experience, try to highlight it as well. That will be very valuable, especially if you are international students. That also add a bit more, uh, you know, diversity to your CV as well. Law firms want diverse candidates nowadays. Next is like a quick, uh, you know, summary of the cover letter part. If you're already part of my uh, group, uh, Global Lawyers Connect, if you type on Facebook group, you can find that group. We have over 10,000 members there. And I share lots of samples, uh, application forms. I think those are really good guidelines for you. Although you shouldn't copy and paste those things because everyone read them nowadays and you don't want to be uh, you know, writing things that are repetitive uh, to the recruiter. So try to use this kind of sample to know what you need to do for your own application. Here, for example, uh, usually uh, uh, first sentence must be crystal clear, what, which scheme you are applying to. And also the first part should be like, why commercial solicitor or why uh, do you want to actually go into law in the first place? And so just explain your own reason. The key here is not to like copy the way I wrote my application or like my letters because it doesn't make sense for you because you have different experiences than what I had. So you need to tailor it to your own experiences, which uh, law firms you work in the past or organization you work with that make you develop an interest in one specific area of law, which later on push you to apply to this particular law firm. So the key is to tell a story, especially if you're an international student, you're already uh, kind of lacking behind compared to other domestic candidates because they have been doing that since year one of their legal study and they have been living in that country so that they already have strong motivation to work there. But for you and me, we didn't have that privilege and also that uh, opportunity. So we kind of need to tell a really convincing story as to why we choose this particular law firm. And that can only be demonstrated by showing your past experience, your interaction with the lawyers at those firms. So this is probably the key about the cover letter. It's not only mentioning those good points about a firm, but to mention your personal experience and then match that with the firm's capacities and capabilities. So at the end, just quick notes on how you can naturally stand out in the job application, especially for foreign law firms, because uh, you know it's always difficult for you to begin with when you have no idea of the recruitment system, the interview uh, stages, and also the qualities they're looking for. Basically, they look for well-rounded person. That's why they don't care whether you're from law or law and law backgrounds. They want someone who has a set of skills that are necessary to be a successful lawyer. And those skills can, not, can actually be demonstrated in any fields of work or any work experiences. Uh, of course, if you already have extensive legal work experience in a particular area of law, that would be amazing because then you, they, they, they don't really need to, you know, uh, like, like evaluate your work and you can even apply directly for training contract in that case because uh, 
if you already have a lot of experiences, you can work for them right away without, uh, you know, going through two weeks of assessment uh, of your performance. So that is a plus if you already got uh, those experience. But most candidates don't. So you need to showcase an interesting CV, a diverse skill set that you've acquired in the past years. For example, me personally, I never worked in a big law firm in the past before getting my training contract. But all I worked for were publishers, legal publishers like Lessons Nessus. I worked there in Hong Kong, intergovernmental organization. I worked in Italy. I uh, work for smaller high street law firms back home. I work for barrister chambers. So I work as a mini pupil for a while as well. I worked as a research assistant for a professor. Those experiences are not extremely relevant to a big law firm. However, I can showcase, I explore my legal career so diligently and carefully in the past years. So that make up my mind that I feel like I want something more exciting in my professional career. And all those experiences lead me to where I am today. So that's why I say telling a story is important and showcasing an interesting CV is more, even more important because recruiters have read thousands of applications from all over the world. Imagine in UK, in a big law firm, everyone wants to apply there, even though you guys, you're not necessarily already here. That's why it's way too competitive for you to just mention all the normal experiences other candidates have shared. You need something extra. So that also brings me to the second final point, know your unique selling point, because everyone has a different unique selling point. For me, it's my internationality. The fact that I come from Hong Kong, I study in the UK, uh, Hong Kong, and also for the US bar as well, my diverse experiences across the road. That's my unique selling point. So that's why I demonstrate that consistently throughout my entire application. For you, it could be different. Maybe you work even in the hospitality sector for a long time. That could be a unique selling point in the sense that you can demonstrate your client service because law firm, they need to serve the client. It's also a business. If you already acquire that knowledge or instance to serve clients effectively, to put client at the heart of your business, those will be a plus as well. So that you need to showcase that in your application form. Sit down one day and try to write down all your past experiences. Realize that what all those experiences can tell about you as a person or a candidate, what you can bring to the table. You need to think about that very carefully. Finally, you need to showcase the efforts you make to understand the legal culture at the firm. To be very honest with you, if you are just, uh, say, in your home country, you just suddenly come up with this idea, you want to work in US or UK, you won't magically get the job by just submit one application because otherwise it would be too easy, isn't it? And it's, it doesn't work that way. Like it's way more difficult for sure. Otherwise, there won't be that many like even domestic UK candidates struggling every day about getting a job here. If you are foreign, you could still just submit an application and then get the offer. That doesn't, isn't that easy. So what you need to do is you need to consistently put yourself out there, join the virtual events or networking events. Nowadays, they put all the things online. So just join it and then attend the events, ask questions that are meaningful and then use it in your application form and consistently join events at all different law firms to showcase a lot of experiences. Sometimes if you can't get a vacation scheme, as I mentioned, I didn't get a vacation scheme either, but I attended almost 12 open days on networking events at different global law firms in London. I think if you attend that many open dates, that is probably equivalent as one vacation scheme, to be honest, because you showcase your efforts. You can definitely do the same as well.